The length of your backswing is going to determine so much about the quality of your golf swing and your ball striking. But do you want to swing long? Do you want to swing short? If you get it wrong, for you, you are always going to be chasing your tail. You're always going to struggle. So I'm going to show you the benefits and the negatives of a long swing and a short swing, but also a very important test and a couple of cues to find out which is going to work best for you. So we're going to start with the longer swing. Let's first cover some of the benefits, shall we? A longer swing is generally more in keeping with what I like to try and get through to you, which is to have a more effortless feeling goal swing. And that is going to happen if we have a bit more flow. And if you allow yourself to have a swing that is potentially longer, that has more movement, you are going to perhaps have less strain in the golf swing. Why? Because think of it like uh, an on-ramp for a highway. There's a long sort of ramp coming in to gather up your speed. If that ramp was really short, you're not going to have enough time to merge onto the highway to gather up that speed. The swing is kind of the same in some ways. Imagine the, the grip here as the car, right? And here's the highway, the, or the ball is sort of getting the highway. If we're starting from here, we have a longer time to gather that speed, to gather that acceleration to be able to swing through. I'm not Bruce Lee, but the one inch punch, if I was to here and trying to go as fast and hard as I can, that's about all I can do. But if I'm back here, more speed, I don't need to be Bruce Lee. I just need to have a swing that gives me the chance to allow that to happen. Now, it's great as well, because if you allow the feeling of heavy arms, which is fantastic, a feeling of heavy arms and a fluid swing can create something, if I exaggerate, that looks, you know, a little bit looser, a bit looser in the wrist, a bit more freedom, a bit more like that. Bobby Jones, very fluid like this, always movement, long. John Daly, I'm not saying you have to be John Daly like this, but there are definite benefits to it. But the downsides are, if you do not allow your body to move a little bit easier, you're going to struggle because you're just going to be out of sync and swinging longer and trying to time it all. But here's the thing. You might think that you need to make a big rotation and a wide swing to be efficient swinging longer. If you don't allow hip rotation here, if you resist your lower body, this is going to be very difficult. So you have to allow hip rotation. You have to allow movement, getting your butt pointing towards the target that way. And then from there, you're going to feel like the arms are dropping down. Okay. If you struggle to be able to move with enough dynamic effort back through to the ball, all of this way, you're going to really struggle to be consistent because yes, we've got that ramp, that on-ramp to garnish speed. That's also more movement that can go wrong, that we have to time correctly. So you have to be the judge. Are you allowing your swing to feel very fluid? Are you allowing your hips to turn and wait for the club to drop down to a full balanced finish? Or are you just trying to swing longer to get a bit more speed and not facilitate, you know, facilitating that movement? So minor changes you can make to help your swing is to flare the feet out a little bit, okay? And I want you to feel that your core and your hips have just a little bit more movement in them here. And the main thing is the arms are to feel very heavy. So we can swing longer with very little effort and still get the good results. Another thing to be wary of is trying to make this big backswing. I don't want you to be moving off the ball, trying to get this big rotation, because again, that's a long way to come back. 
So feel free to allow a longer swing, but stay centered. Allow your hips to move. Don't try and do too much. What can happen is we get just too quick and rushed trying to hit this ball so hard with the driver. So having a more languid, longer feel is going to give you a bit more patience when you hit it. If you're struggling to make a wind up and a turn and you get a little bit stuck here and then you try and over force it, that's where the bad shots happen. But if we can blend a bit more length with some connection, you're into a good spot. And the way we can sort of do that is just this tiny little thing. When you sort of hold the club and set up, I want you to feel like the back of your arms here are resting on top of your chest, like so. They're kind of pinned down almost. Not the elbows, I'm not really tight in with the elbows here, it's just the top of the chest. The triceps are resting on the top. Why? That's gonna give me a modicum of connection. It's gonna keep my torso connected, but allow the freedom of movement of my arms and wrists so I can swing longer. I couple that with a bit more sort of movement in the butt, getting the butt facing the target a little bit more, allowing this front leg to move if it needs to, is gonna help me get that power, that effortless distance from a longer swing, but still stay connected. Let's find your optimal backswing. Get into your golf posture, all right? Let your arms hang pretty naturally. Your lead arm is what we're focusing on here. I want you, without thinking, without doing too much, I want you to make a backswing and allow your lead arm to move up to the top. Allow a bit of hip movement, but try and replicate your kind of normal golf swing feel, like so, okay? What I'm doing here is, that's actually kind of showing me my optimal natural length of backswing without overcompensation or manipulation. Really just an introduction, but we go into details of a short golf swing and how to maximize it in our club, our online membership, and you can check it out for a free two week trial. It's got that plus a ton more live workshop and me. Some of you may know that I'm a fan of the short swing, especially for senior golfers or older golfers, because it's just a little bit more reliable. We're not trying to do as much. We don't need as much rotation or driving of the body or whatever it might be. We can still produce very good golf shots with short swings. So how do you find out if it's right for you? If the swing looks a little bit stabby like this, you know, you're not getting flow, you're not getting balance. You don't necessarily have to lengthen the swing. We just have to allow a bit more movement and keep telling our words effortless. So with a short swing, we can get stabby. Because we're short, we're trying to hit it harder. We, we know that we're only here and we're trying to muscle it with the body. We're trying to do something like this, okay? It's not the short swing's fault, it's your intent. And we can still get a lot of power, more than enough power, more than enough consistency, only swinging halfway, especially if it suits your body a bit more, depending on the width of your chest and various things like that. So let's enhance the short swing. The negatives are that it's going to affect your tempo. But if you can, make sure that your setup is supporting a shorter swing, meaning you still are going to allow the lower body to turn and rotate. You can still wind up this way. It's not just a sort of bent arm move like this. But what you're gonna find is if you have, especially with irons and even driver somewhat, you wanna have a little bit more weight on your front side. That's going to help use this lead side as like a hinge, as a pivot. And we only have to really swing to about here to be able to drop the club back down really do focus on having soft wrists. Your arms are floating in transition. Instead of rushing back down towards the ball, we are going to feel that the club is still traveling back this way as our intention, as our body moves and falls 
back towards the ball. It's this floating sensation, this delay in time. Think of John Rahm. He does it spectacularly well. And he also, to help this, allows his heel to raise. From the back foot here, or the front foot, he allows his heel to raise on his backswing. And in his transition, he plants that heel back down. That is his cue to work on his sequence. So that's what I suggest for you. Set up with a bit more weight on the front side, turn your right toe out, allow the heel to raise just a little bit and transition down, keeping that fluid sensation harder. And it works great with the driver. With the driver, we don't want to be hitting at the ball. And what can happen is if you're swinging short, that can sort of be overemphasized. We have to focus on getting through, not hitting at, even with a short swing. So I want you to make some practice swings, okay? From a very short sort of delivery beforehand. But what you're going to try and do is get this core through and keep the arms straight. It's almost like a big power punch. But this is going to stop that sort of look where you're short but your body is stalled. We want to try and push with the legs through. This is great for all the golfers as well to push those legs through. Keeping those arms a little bit straighter. So from a short swing, we push and it's a sweep. And you'll be amazed at the distances you can get with that pushing movement. Let me know if you have any questions. But I also want you to go and check out this lesson right here. It is gonna help you a ton to simplify the swing, but really refine a short swing and a long swing to take your game and swing to the next level, no matter what age you are. See you next time.